In this video, we'll talk about using the washer method to find volumes of solid revolution when the revolution axis is vertical. So all these techniques and all these situations we've done before can all be done with vertical axis of rotation in addition to horizontal ones, right? Everything before has been the x-axis, the line y equals 2. Those have been the lines we've been rotating around. Well, we can do the same thing for vertical lines. So if we have a setup, like a region like this, that I want to rotate around a vertical line over here, what has to happen? Well, the point of how we got washers was the segment we took was perpendicular to the axis of rotation, right? We had vertical segments where we had a horizontal axis that gave us a washer. So in this case, I'm going to want to take segments this way. And now if I rotate this around this line, I will get my washer shape. So the point is I need to take horizontal segments and add those up to get my volume here. The important thing to realize is for this to work, this is going to have to be a dy integral. Just like for area between two curves and for all the other stuff we've done so far, whenever you're stacking up these lines horizontally and like they stack vertically because they are horizontal lines, the integral you need is a dy integral. The process is the same, the idea is the same, but now it's going to be a dy integral and all of my relations have to be in terms of y instead of being in terms of x. So here we'll get a volume that is an integral from c to d with a pi in front of it. And now instead of having an, an f of x and g of x, it's now going to be an f of y squared minus a g of y squared, where this f of y is the further function from the axis of rotation horizontally, and the g of y is the closer function horizontally dy. So you still want to take into account how far things are from the axis of rotation, and everything's going to have to be x as a function of y to give you the proper orientation to make this integral work. So the same techniques we had from the earlier sections on area between curves when you're doing horizontally simple regions, those same techniques will come back again to help us solve these problems as well. We'll have to represent the boundaries in terms of x as a function of y, plug these into the formulas that we have for the washer method, and use that to help us solve this problem. So let's we'll see an example of this. So find the volume of the solid revolution obtained by revolving the region between the curves y equals x squared and y equals 4 around the line x equals minus 3. We have a parabola and a line that cuts it off, and then we're going to revolve this around a vertical line. Let's draw the picture and see what this looks like. Here's the image you want to think about. There's our parabola, y equals x squared. There's the line, y equals 4. And I'm revolving around the vertical line, x equals minus 3. So if I want to do the washer method here, and we'll see a separate way to do this in the next section, which is the shell method, I need to look at a horizontal segment that I'm trying to rotate. So it's this segment here that I'm trying to rotate around this line. That will give me a washer, but I need to figure out what are my inner and outer radii for this setup. The inner radius should be here. And so where is that? Well, the distance between minus 3 and the branch of this curve here. Now it turns out since y equals x squared, I can represent this the other way around as x equals plus or minus square root of y. And since you want x to be positive or negative, this side over here is x equals square root of y. And this side is x equals minus square root of y, right? It's not a function, but you can represent the two branches separately. So my inner radius here is going to be minus square root of y and then minus negative 3. The distance between negative square root y and minus 3 is this here, which is 3 minus square root of y. A positive number on this range, so we're good. What's my outer? Well, the outer is then going to be square root of y minus negative 3, because that's the other branch of the function. It's going to give me 3 plus square root of y. There's my inner and my outer. Now I want to set up the integral. So the volume should be computed by some integral of the outer radius, 3 plus root y squared, minus the inner radius, 3 minus root y squared, dy with a pi out front. Now, what are my bounds on this integral? Well, these are bounds in y. So what values of y make up this area? Well, it's from y equals 0 up to the top line at y equals 4. Right here, I did not need to figure out that the intersection points were at 2 and minus 2 because that didn't matter for solving this problem. But now I can set this up, expand things out, and then try to solve this integral out from here. We'll foil out the two terms. And then both the 9 and the y's will cancel, leaving me with just pi integral 0 to 4 of 12 root y dy. 
and I can integrate. And when I plug in four, the y to the three halves becomes an eight. This cancels this to become a four, so I get an eight times an eight, which is gonna be a 64 pi. So that's the volume of that solid. And what this gives us now is the ability to handle both horizontal rotation, axis of rotations and vertical axis of rotations using the washer method. For this one, you have to make sure you solve out for things in terms of y, but besides that, the method is the same as everything we've done so far for the washer method in doing these problems. We'll see the shell method, the second way to handle these sorts of problems in the next section. But as of now, here's how you set these up and how you handle solving these volumes of solid revolution problems using the washer method.